Welcome to the first inquiry exploration of Investigation 5 on Magnetic Forces. Experience 1 is called Magnetic Forces and Fields, and it's about what causes magnetism and how magnetic materials behave when they feel these magnetic forces. So your laboratory exploration in this experience focuses on how to quantify the magnetic force. In other words, you get to search for one of nature's mathematical rules regarding magnetism. All right, lab time. The inquiry lab for experience one for magnetic forces is called magnetic force and separation distance. And its essential question is, how does the force between magnets change with distance? As you know, there are other forces that act at a distance, electric and gravitational. What's interesting about those two is that they behave in the same way mathematically. Is the magnetic force their equal, or does it act differently? Let's see the lab overview. The force due to gravity between two massive objects and the force due to electrostatic charge between two electrical charges behave similarly. In both cases, when the distance between the two objects changes, the change in magnitude of the force is inversely proportional to the distance between them. For both the gravitational and electrostatic force, the mathematical relationship between the magnitude of the force and separation distance can be written in the form F equals A over D squared, where F equals force, A equals constant of proportionality, and D equals separation distance. In this experiment, the mathematical relationship between the magnitude of the magnetic force and the separation distance between two magnets will be determined using dipole magnets. The general expression can be written F equals A over D to the N, where N is the exponential factor. For both gravitational and electrostatic forces, this factor is equal to 2. This is the apparatus we are going to be using in this lab. The force scale will help us apply a specific amount of force to the magnets. When the same poles of two magnets are brought together, two north ends for instance, they will repel each other. The closer you bring them together, the stronger that repulsive force will become. This is something that you can feel easily. The magnets being used in this lab are neodymium, which are extremely strong. They have a north and south pole just like any other magnet. When putting this setup together, you want to make sure the same poles face each other. The magnets need to be oriented so they repel each other. Be careful. The strength of these magnets means they can snap together with a lot of force if opposite poles come in contact with each other. This repulsion is what causes the smaller container to essentially float inside the larger container. While the two containers are not touching, they are still part of the same system, which is why the combined mass is recorded. They are interacting through magnetic forces, which are non-contact forces. When the PVC is pushed down, the repulsion between the magnets can be felt. The more force applied, the smaller the separation distance, but the stronger the repulsion. If we were to plot just the separation distance versus force, the graph would show an exponential curve. By plotting the log of the separation distance versus the log of the force, the slope of the line can be calculated. The inverse of the magnitude of the slope gives the exponent, which shows the relationship between force and distance between two dipole magnets. So, you've seen that the electric and gravitational force have the same mathematical patterns regarding force and distance, in what's called an inverse square relationship, meaning the force decreases as distance increases. That's the inverse part. However, if you increase the distance by a factor of two, or in other words, if you double the distance between the Earth and the Sun, for instance, then the gravitational force is not two times less, it's four times less. And that's the square part. Two squared is four. This pattern repeats, so if the Earth were three times as far, the force is three squared, or nine times weaker. And the electric force works the same way. They have an exponential factor of 2 in their equation. So, our task is to find how the magnetic force compares to these forces. Does it have an exponential factor of 2, or something different? In order to determine accurately, 
Your data collection in this lab will need to be as accurate as possible, so get ready. Now, overall, the lab isn't terribly difficult, but you do have to be attentive to detail in your setup. So let's go through it. You saw in the lab overview that you'll be measuring the magnetic force by attaching two magnets to a couple of plastic containers and then pulling them from a spring scale. So first, you'll need a post and clamp. Begin by taking this clamp and attaching it to your table. Then you can place this metal post in this slot and tighten it down. At the top of the post, fasten a short metal rod with a rod attachment like so. You can hang your spring scale from the rod for the time being. Okay, so it's time to secure the magnets. To begin, you should have two neodymium magnets. Be very careful when separating these. They are incredibly strong. And if they snap together because you bring it too close to another metal or another magnet, they will attract very hard and it can be painful to you or damaging to the magnets. So when you deal with these, hold them tightly and keep them away from other magnets. Only bring them close to other magnets slowly, like this. Hold your thumbs in between so that they can't snap together. Now, you definitely wanna do this part right because it can be a major source of your success or your challenge later with the data collection. So you're gonna take the larger plastic container and tape one of the magnets to the bottom outer side. The critical part here is your placement of the magnet. Take care to place the magnet in the exact center. Very, very important part here. Then tape over with clear transparent tape like this. Once you've got it, you will do the same thing with the other magnet, but on the small container. But before you do it too soon, you must orient the magnet so that it repels the other magnet when you place the small container inside the large one. To be sure, the magnet should attract from the outside. So you can test this by taping the magnet and then bringing them close together just like this, but being careful not to bring them too close so they don't forcefully connect. Hold the magnets down with your thumbs acting as a barrier and slowly bring them close until you feel the magnetic force. If it feels like they are attracting, pulling close together, you're good. If they feel to be repelling, then they will attract when you place the container inside and you need to flip the magnet in the small container. Again, be detailed in placing the magnet directly in the center and make sure you tape tightly. Then place the small container on an electronic scale and measure its mass in grams. Write that down in your table. Then take the small PVC tube and measure its mass and write that down in your data table as well. When using this scale, always make sure the reading is zero before you place something on. If it isn't, press this zero button and then you're good to go. Now cut about 30 centimeters of string, which is about a ruler's length. Now here's the crucial part. Tape one end of the string to the side of the large container, then take this key ring and slot the string through. Once that part is done, tape the other end of the string symmetrically to the other side of the container. Some tips here are to tape the exact same length of the tape on the other side and tape it directly across the other side. If you were to look down the container from the top, the string should split the container exactly in half. All these details will help ensure you can hang the apparatus to the scale with balance and evenness. Now you've got a little bucket handle here and you can simply slot the key ring over the hook of the spring scale. Now from here, you're ready for data collection. Yes! In a nutshell, 
you're going to measure the magnetic force by placing the small container inside the large. And because they repel, you know that they can increase the force by pushing them together. Since they are connected to a spring scale, which measures pulling force, you can measure the force by adding mass in the container or pulling down. For each level of force, you measure the distance by placing a ruler on the side and measuring the centimeters between the bottom of the top magnet and the top of the bottom magnet. This is a challenge to do, no sugarcoating this one. Now, you wanna to round to the nearest millimeter. Take your time to get as clear a reading as possible. Make sure you are at eye level. Place the zero centimeter mark at the top of the bottom magnet and then measure upwards. Then you'll drop the PVC tube inside and measure again. Then you will push down on the PVC tube for each of the given pull forces. For example, when it says measure 100 grams or one newton of force, Push down on the PVC until you see a reading of 100 grams or one newton on the spring scale. This will get increasingly difficult as you push down further. And that's why it's very important you place both magnets directly in the center of each container. You really will need a partner to help with this measurement process. I recommend someone reading the spring scale and pushing the PVC pipe down. This person needs to hold as steady as possible so that the other person can take time to measure the distance with the ruler from eye level. Don't get frustrated, take your time. This is a pretty fun lab, I've gotta say. Definitely take some setup time, but it's very rewarding when you do it correctly. Remember, your upcoming mathematical conclusion as to the nature of the magnetic force and distance highly depends on your accuracy in measurement. So be great. We look forward to seeing how you analyze your data. And of course, we look forward to watching you take on this inquiry. Have fun and see you in the lab.